Stop. What? It's raining, man. Cardiff. I'm going to go stop. Have a time. <laughs> <laughs> It's raining, cold outside, go on, I feel what, what? Let, let me just have a look. Johnny, where have you been? It's not that raining, man. You don't understand, it is raining. It's like someone just dashed a bucket of water all over me, like I don't belong here. Right, so I'll, hold on, I, this is a family painting. Can we just talk, <laughs> talk to me about your family? Yeah. We're just trying to see, that's me. Where's he? That's me. I'm mucking out, man. Yeah. I'm cleaning this. Is I'm that Mama Nelson now? <laughs> <laughs> Who are these? Good times, good times. Good times, yeah? yeah bring, good back, times. bring back the memories. We're in Wales, Cardiff, reloaded, first show for Sky uh, yeah. back in 2014. In fact, I think it's the first show in England anywhere, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's right. I'm pretty sure. Um, Lee Selby, uh, Rendell Monroe, uh, different, different stages of their career, totally, aren't they? Lee Selby's on the up. Being criticised in his last two performances slightly. A bit flat, yeah, a bit Rendell flat. Rendell Monroe's put three wins together to get into this stage now, so, you know, where are they at? I, I'm a big fan of Rendell Monroe's because uh, I like his style. He's been underrated and at the time in his, of his career. He reminded me of myself where people just ignored him and thought about everybody else in the mix. I think when his time finally came, it probably came a little too late, uh, so he couldn't take advantage of, of, of his, his, his experience. And again, um, uh, I'd love him to do it. I just think he's up against somebody. If Selby performs on form, will 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 be too slick for him. But the reason why Selby's getting a bit of stick because of, because of his last two um, performances because we've seen how good he can be uh, and we expect he can be a lot better. Uh, but so when he's got a little flat, people aren't willing to accept that. He's still won. Um, so I just think Selby's got to perform on top form, he's got to, uh, he can't let uh, Rendell get into a rhythm because if he does, Rendell's very fit, he's very focused, he's got to pick him to pieces, he's got to do what uh, Scott Quigg did, uh, he's got to be smart about how he goes about his work, don't disrespect him, you know, one thing you can't buy, borrow, pretend to have and that's experience and that's what he's got a lot of, so uh, Selby's got to show respect, don't go in, in there disrespectful because you'll slip up. Mm. Gavin Reeves was on Sky uh, ringside just he's saying that you know, if he was to lose his fight, then that would be it for I him. I and that. you think that's the case? Where else is it for him to go? Mm. If he loses, where can he go? You know, he's, he's, he's gone to the heights of the, high, of the highs and he can't get there. You know, he's boxing at domestic level now. So he, he, as far as he's concerned, he's the, the domestic king. You know, once you box for a European or world title, to box at domestic level, it's, it's beneath you. He's won a world title as well. That's what I'm saying, yeah. it's beneath you. So therefore, you think, if I can't beat these guys at this level, some guys have got the pride to not want to be a journeyman. Some guys think, can think, you know what, I'll be a journeyman, I'll just add a bit of dough. He ain't doing that. He's still got a bit of pride left in him. If he loses and still boxes on, the pride's gone. He's doing it just for the dough. Mm. Um, Anthony Joshua probably coming up against his sternest test of date in his fourth professional outing against uh, Dorian Darch. And Dorian Darch is openly stated that he's not going to take a back, a back step. Well, he's yeah, but you know, when he's talking about he's, he's, he's even when you hear him, he's, he's being very respectful of... Uh, of Anthony Joshua, you know, and he knows, he respects his power, respects what he can do, and he's saying, look, I'm just going to give my all and just keep walking forward. I think that's the worst thing you could possibly do, unless he's strong, fast and aggressive enough to push Anthony Joshua back. Uh, don't give him any space, I understand that. Don't back off and try and box, I understand that. But if you're going put to him, put him on it, you've got to do it Tyson style, left, right, pressure him. You know, don't get a rhythm about your work. Put, you put the guy under pressure. I don't think Dodge has got that. I don't think he, that's the kind of fight he is. He's going to give it his all because, you know what, he's on home turf. And the, 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 the thing about this is, uh, for the first time, Anthony Joshua's boxing in the opponent's backyard. So how would he fare when he walks in and they're booing him and they're jeering him? Because, you know, the Wales crowd, they're, they're, they're a good, strong crowd. I can remember being here in 1995 when Naz boxed um, um, for the world title. And, and when he boxed, it was absolutely, Steve Robinson, he was absolutely packed out, he was banging down the rain. We were getting pelted with coins and everything. It's a good night, but you know what, they are very, uh, they support their own, big time. Mm. You know, I'm not one to cause trouble. Yeah. You know that, don't you? I don't yeah, know, that's, how, that's how you roll. Stir it up. No, but I've just been talking to your man. Which one? Glenn. Right. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've been talking to Glenn. He's been slagging you off. <laughs> no, seriously, yeah. I interviewed him, right? He was talking about denim on denim, yeah, Johnny's shiny, shiny head, receding hairline. He's talking about all kinds of shit. You've got to be able to float it. If you can't float it, be a goal. Be a follower like Glenn. The man's still dressing like it's 1962. He's talking about 85-15 split as well if you two fight. He won't fight. 
He's, he, what he's done? No, he's 90, no, no, ninety-five, five. <laughs> yeah. in his favour. He's going to be three smart, like George Groves did. Three smart. That's what Brennan calls it. You're too smart. You outsmart yourself. That's what Glenn's doing. I'm telling you now. Glenn's talked him. Talk. He signed. He's written a check for his body that he can't cash. He's talking himself into fighting me. Come on, brother. I will kick his old ass. Old furry old ass. Which I bet he's got a tweet on. I yeah. bet he's got some tweet. On. I bet yeah. he's got. Some, you see? Yeah. You see more with the I've not even seen him just walked in. More with the times. I could walk in. I could feel my way to Glenn. Tweed. Wait, let me see what colour. Some old creased up shirt. Shut up, fool. Glenn, <laughs> my ass. Just finally, Johnny. Talking point in the last 10 days or so is this uh, slight episode of East End, isn't it? Frotch and Groves. What's well, I had a take on this and I thought with, uh, with George Groves, that George Groves, like it or not, is in the weakest position. Because at the end of the day, if Carl Frotch doesn't fight him, he's still a world champion. Uh, at the end of the day, if Carl Frotch fights, goes on and boxes Chavez or somebody else, he will still earn a few million. Where is George Groves going to earn this kind of dough that he's hoping to command from fighting Carl Frotch if it's not Carl Frotch? Even if you put him in with Andre Ward, they will not, he will not get offered a seven-figure sum to box Andre Ward, even if he boxes for the vacant IBF title, he will not get that kind of dough. So if I was George and I thought I really believed I could beat Carl Frotch, you know what I'd do? I'd say, come, let's do it. You know, haggle out a deal, haggle out a deal, squeeze it down, grind it down, say, come, let's do it. Put him in a situation where he cannot refuse. And if he does that, then he gets the glory, he gets the dough, and he gets the title. But what is what everybody doing? They're all playing poker. They're all saying, no, I ain't doing that, I ain't doing that, because there's bad feeling there. If I was George and I really believed I could do it, you know what? He thought he was smart, went to the IBF to get a ruling to see what percentage he could get. He said he wanted X amount. They offered him, he got offered a seven figure uh, sum. The IBF said, You're on an 85, 15% split. Oops. Big slip up. Now they can say, Yo, here you go. Unless he goes to purse bids. Now, if he goes to purse bids, that's a big gamble because the kind of money they're talking, he's got to, he's got to go for purse bids for between 10, 8 and 10 million for the, for the kind of money that he wants. George, wake up, man. Take the fight then live to fight another day. Sometimes you've got to lose a battle to win a war. Be smart. No disrespect to him because I think he did a cracking job. But I'm just saying, if you really believe in yourself and you'll, and you'll beat uh, Carl Foch, do the smart thing. Get the fight done. Take the fight. Be a hero. Don't be a zero. Okay. Um, <laughs> right, man. He's rapping. Johnny, I've just come back from America. and um, I, I saw just... that. Are you got married? What? I saw you with a chick at, uh, uh, on, your, uh, on, your, um, on your, uh, your, your Twitter and all that sort of stuff. Who's the girl you were? Oh, I was just a friend. It's none of your fucking business, that's yeah, what it is. You don't have to swear. No, I can swear, man. It's my thing, I can swear. Listen, <laughs> don't be asking about my, 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 my women, man. It's an emotional situation. No, it's no it's emotional. But can I just it's say one thing? Yeah. In America, yeah, in LA, yeah. no one's heard of you. Like, they yeah, don't but, even know who you are. Yeah, but just remember, in America as well, being 20 stone is handsome. So I don't really give a damn what the Americans say. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? If I'm walking down and I'm overweight, no, don't diss Americans because they love I'm you. I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. Don't yeah. diss Americans because a lot of Americans watch this. They love you, John. Hey, listen, Americans, I love you, man. Well, lose some weight off your ass. <laughs> lose some weight off your ass. You gotta sit down at two seats when you do a doo doo. It's like a full roll of paper. Come on. Johnny, do you know what? Down. You're not really want to talk about. My friend. When we went to Miami, my friend is a big fat dude. <laughs> Right, so when we're in England, he cannot get a girl. We're walking in Miami. What happened? The girls are going mad over him. I was like, his wingman, unbelievable. He's yeah. like, he can't believe it. I tell you the thing I'm talking about. Call the fridge baker. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. baker. I've exposed you. Baker, went, yeah. went to Miami. They went crazy over me. He can't believe it. He's thinking, are they talking to me? I'm like, who's your skinny friend? That's what they're saying to me. Who's your skinny black friend? That's what they're saying to me. And I'm thinking, I was unbelievable. The girls are going mad over him, and they were. Good looking women who's your skinny black friend to him. Wow. And then he opened his mouth with that sweet posh voice. You see, he looks apart until he opens his mouth. <coughs> He'd never be scared of him. What um alright, well listen, Johnny, what are you doing tonight? Whatever you want. Are you staying in? Yeah, I'm staying here, but I'm uh I ain't going out. <laughs> are, you, are you going out out? No. Are I'm you going out out or no, out? I'm staying in uh, I'm staying in. I've got work to do. Are we not going out, Al? No, I don't do that. You know I don't do that. I don't uh, do that, man. I, I don't roll like that. You it. guys are just a bit too wild for me. I've got work to do. I don't go out. Okay. <laughs> Coogan right. Cassius, Johnny Nelson, IFL TV. 11 o'clock. Begun! Shit!